Welcome to the most boring board game video you will ever see. Yes, it's boring. For, for a long time now, I've been trying to think how to bring this game to life in video format and do it justice. And you know what? I just can't. It's just a deck of cards. It's a trick-taking game. And a lot of us have played trick-taking games. And we either like trick-taking games or we don't like trick-taking games. But this one is, is very much different and very much lively. Unlike this video which I'm doing for you right now. Because this trick-taking game, this one right here, is more of a party game than a trick-taking game. Let me show you. The Great Damuti is a power struggle game. At the beginning, everyone will be chosen a position. Uh, you can do this by drawing cards out the deck uh, because the deck is unique. And if you have the lowest card, you become the Great Damuti. Maybe give yourself uh, a royal regal hat to, to, to simulate that. The player with the second lowest number will become your vice president and sit to your left and then the third player to the left of that player, and all the way down until you get to the last player who is actually called the peon, and maybe give them a really crummy hat to wear as well. Now the peon is at the bottom of the food chain, and it's their responsibility, it's their job to try and get off the bottom and climb all the way up and become the Dalmuti themselves, whereas the Dalmuti is trying to hold on to their position, and then all the other players are trying to take the position of the Dalmuti and trying not to be the pee on uh, because nobody likes to be peed on and this is all done with tr a trick taking game where you're playing cards and you're trying to finish your hand to try and be the Dalmuti if you're the first person to get rid of your hand of cards you become the Dalmuti as the peon player, you're the player responsible for this unique deck of cards. You're the player that's going to have to shuffle and deal out the cards every turn. And you are the player that's going to have to collect all the cards once a trick has been finished. You are also going to have to suck up to the great Dan Mooty, who's going to be sat to your left, um, and obey every wish that he offers, like go fetch the beers, or maybe even clean out the bedpan underneath the table because he couldn't be bothered to move out of his seat after he's finished with his beer. Now I did say that this deck is unique because you can play this game with a standard deck of 52 cards. Or in my case, I played a French version of the game called Tour du Coup with two decks of tarot cards mixed together and it was like eight to ten players that would play at a time but this deck is unique because there are no suits there are a a couple of jokers uh which are in here and then you have a one number one card which is the great damage to yourself you have two number two cards ow and then you have three number three cards all the way up to 12 number 12 cards i didn't drop them on my face there you go so our poor peon will be distributing all the cards to all the players. And then before the game can actually start, there's a thing called the taxation phase, which is like in real life, where the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. What will happen is our poor peon will have to look at their hand of cards and uh, choose the most powerful card and give it to the great down Mooty. Now, the lower the number, the more powerful it is because there is only one number one. So our, our peon there will be obliged to give this number one card to the down Mooty and the down Mooty will give him whatever trash he has. You know, they just throw a 12 at him like that. In a larger group 
And what will happen is there will be more cards exchanged. The Damuti and the Peon will exchange two cards. So uh, our poor Peon will have lots of maybe 12s in their hand. Whereas also the Vice Peon and the Vice Damuti will have to exchange one card as well. Now you may be saying, wow, that's not fair. Our poor Peon is never going to climb the social ladder with loads of weak, powerful cards. But yes, power comes from having powerful cards, but also power comes from having a greater force in number of cards. The round will then start with the Great Dalmuti. They will choose a number of cards from their hand and play into the center of the table. Now they may play one card or they may play several cards, but if they play several cards, they have to be of the same denomination. So for example, three elevens. All the other players will have to then play three cards as well. They cannot play any less or any more. But that denomination has to be, the I'm not playing dominoes here. That domination, denomination has to be lower than the last one that is played. So for example, if three elevens were played, the next player would have to play three something lower. Maybe three tens, maybe three nines, three eights. This carries on around the table until everybody has passed. You can pass and actually let the game come back to you and then replay, you, you know, but that's a risk that you're gonna have to take. And uh, once everybody has passed, that will signify the end of this trick. The peon collects those cards and the player that played the last hand on top of that trick is actually the player that starts the next trick. And this will continue around the table until players start dropping out because they've got no more cards in their hand. Oh yeah, there you are. And once they have no cards in their hand, they obviously have to remember their position of where they came out. And if you came out first, you become the next great Dalmuti for the next round. If you finish second, you become the vice. And this is where some of the element of the fun lies in the musical chairs, the people having to swap places. Not all the time, there'll be some rounds where players are finishing exactly the same order, but there'll be times when players are moving places. And if the Great Down Mooty changes places, they don't have to move at all. The, wor the world revolves around them. Basically, they sit still, and then whoever finished second will sit to their left all the way around the table until the peon is on their right and then the next hand of cards will play. Now, one of the things that this, this game could have done with was maybe some tokens or maybe just some more cards which you collect when you are out of that round to signify that you are the next Dalmuti or the next Vice. Because... Because sometimes when you're playing, you'll forget which order players go out because you're just so in wrapped in the game. But, you know, having some kind of way to remember who finished first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, especially in an eight-player game, you know, it just saves some of the confusion. So where did the Jokers come in in all this? Well, the Jokers have a face value of 13, making them the most rubbish cards in the deck, the most point pointless, worthless ones. So, I mean, if you lead a hand or a trick with this card, uh, that's 13, so it means everyone gets to play a card on top, which is woo. Um, but they do have special powers as well. Adding this to a series of numbers will make it the same kind of number. So you could have three sevens, you add one of these to it, you have four sevens, or if you have two of them, you've got five sevens. You can even have four twos in the game because of the jokers they are useful in that respect but they're also useful in another respect if during the taxation phase a player has been dealt both of these dudes they can have a chance to overthrow the government and call for a revolution you see you're on a revolution well you know no a 
revolution means that everybody at the table switches polar opposite chairs. So the great Dan Muti becomes the peon and the peon becomes the great Dan Muti. And then the vice peon and the vice Dan Muti swap places and so on and so on and so on down the table. But you know, you don't have to do this. This is just one way to get power and glory and jump straight to the top of the ladder. But sometimes you might just want to use them just to win and move yourself up and nobody else. But instead of relying on the jokers to win you, the, not the game essentially, but to push yourself up into a higher position, you could just play professionally. This game is about card counting. You're going to be counting cards and, and remembering that the ones have been played, all the twos have been played now. Um, I've got a three. I could probably win a trick with my three now. Or card counting in the regards that you know, this player's got two cards left and that one's got three cards left and I've still got 12 cards left. What should I do? I know what, I'm gonna play the five sevens. No one can follow that, I've won that trick. Or oh, what can I play next? I'm gonna play this. And you know, you can work your way out of those, you know, problems by playing numbers of cards, which you can see other players can't follow because they don't have those cards left. You know, one, there's one player, they got one card left and it's like, eh. and everyone's playing twos. Two of this, two of that. And they're like, ooh. But um, that's the fun of the game. It's calculating how to play, when to play, and when to pass. Sometimes passing is very important, especially if you're the Dalmuti. You know, you could win this trick by playing those four sixes because you don't think many other players are going to have four of the fives or four of the fours. They may have a few and a joker, but um, you know, maybe it's best just to wait because maybe someone else here at the table has got four 11s or four 12s, which will start off your chain and then you can go, bam, I'm out of here. This is a simple trick taking game with this added element of a unique deck and this kind of like party style walking around the table changes positions and also having a bit of fun as the peon gets peed on by everyone else um technically this game is just a deck of cards the art is okay it's nothing special the quality of the cards is diminishing rapidly they're going browns in the corners they're all it's not a flat deck of cards anymore it comes in a box so technically this product is yeah it's not that good it's a six out of ten technically at my technical score um the rule book does a good job of explaining the rules it has a nice little bit from richard about talking about where you got the idea of this game and it's incredible you know this guy has created some of the greatest card games in the world has come up with this small card game um but is it as great as magic and netrunner well, for me personally, yes. This is hours of fun. Why is this deck warped and, and worn? Because we've played this game multiple times. And we don't play to score and we don't play to win. We just play to pass the time and have a good time between ourselves because it is just a fun game. And we won't stop playing until at least one or two people get bored of the game. And so we could be probably playing for an hour. And if you think about it, each hand in a trick-taking game is what, two to five minutes? That's quite a few games. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. For me, this gets a board game geek rating of a nine out of 10 because we love playing the Great Down Mooty. It is, it's a shame that there's no, you know, as I said, some way to count what order you come out of. It's a shame there's no props, maybe just like a badge, you know, a medal of honor. I am the Down Mooty and you are not. Maybe eight badges, then each player can have a badge and a position. Hmm, but you know, little things like that would boost this game up technically and as well as personally for me to make this a fantastic game. If you combine those two scores together, this would kind of give you like a mean average, uh, like a real score. And that's a 7.5 out of 10 if you combined my BGG and my technical score. So maybe that will entice you into checking out this game by the legendary Richard Garfield. So, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and it's pointed you in the direction whether The Great Dalmuti is a game for you. If you've liked this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might be interested in this game, share this video with them. <sighs> Why did I do that? I've got to pick it all up now. 
And you can always go to Board Game, uh, Board Game Geek. You can always go to BoardGamesEverybodyShould.com and check out my blog there. I also write reviews as well as do video reviews of the games as well. Um, and there you go. I hope that, you know, you don't have to buy every board game out there. Because, you know, there's too many. So thanks for watching, I'll say ciao for now, and remember to please play nicely with each other. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good I got some board games?